Have you ever been confounded by the intriguing belief that Jesus Christ, a man who walked the earth around 2,000 years ago, could also be God? This concept is undeniably challenging to grasp, especially when we ponder the fact that Jesus had a birth, a life, and a death, traits that appear to oppose the concept of an eternal, unending God. This contradiction sparked countless debates and dialogues throughout the past, tracing back to the nascent years of Christianity. Prominent Christian theologians such as Augustine of Hippo and Thomas Aquinas engaged with this enigma, their treaties bearing the marks of an intense endeavor to decipher the dual, the dual nature of Christ. Augustine, in his seminal work Confessions, elaborated on this divine paradox, exploring the dichotomy of Jesus' divinity and humanity. Similarly, Thomas Aquinas, in his masterpiece Summa Theologica, dissected the relationship between Christ's divine and human aspects, indicating a profound struggle to reconcile these two sides. Not just theologians, but also the early councils of the Church, such as the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and, and the Council of Chalcedon in 451 AD, were assembled to demystify the paradox of Jesus' divine and human nature. These gatherings were not mere meetings, but monumental events that shaped and influenced the core beliefs of Christianity. The Athanasian Creed, stemming from these councils, clearly the belief in Christ as both God and man, laying a significant foundation for Christian theology. These historical occurrences highlight the intricate layers of this debate and its profound impact on Christian doctrine. Diverse interpretations by early Christian thinkers like Origen and Tertullian further enriched the discourse, adding depth and dimension to the understanding of Jesus' identity. Today we will delve deeper into these questions, drawing upon the immense wealth of wisdom embedded within the Bibles. To fully comprehend the mystery and profundity of the Holy Trinity in Christian belief, we must examine it in greater detail. This core tenet holds that God exists as three distinct entities, yet remains one inseparable entity. The Trinity is composed of God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, each reflecting the entirety of God's being. It's important to note that the Son's existence isn't believed to have initiated with his earthly birth, but rather he has been co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit. A significant verse that underscores this is John 1, 1, which states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here, the Word serves as an epithet for Jesus indicating his existence beyond the confines of time and highlighting his eternal presence even before his earthly incarnation. The Holy Trinity doctrine's validity is further reinforced in the New Testament, specifically in the Gospel of Matthew 28, 19. Here, Jesus commands his followers to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This instruction vividly illustrates the Trinitarian concept, showcasing the three distinct entities of God, while emphasizing their indivisible unity. Further affirmation of the Trinitarian doctrine is found in 2 Corinthians 13 14, where Apostle Paul gives a benediction that mirrors the Trinitarian understanding. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This blessing not only highlights the unique roles of each component within the Trinity, but also underscores their unified essence. By delving deeper into these scriptural references, we can better grasp and appreciate the intricate and profound doctrine of the Holy Trinity, a cornerstone of Christian belief. The Bible offers numerous instances that highlight Jesus Christ's dual nature, exemplifying his unique embodiment of both humanity and divinity during his time on earth. This intriguing combination of two natures is a profound enigma, which is beyond human understanding. One such instance comes in the book of Book of John 11:35 where we witness Jesus' human sentiments. He wept at the demise of Lazarus, his friend, thus showcasing his ability to empathize and feel sorrow like any other human. However, in the same we see a display of his divine nature when he performs the miracle of resurrecting Lazarus, an act only possible by God. Additionally, the Gospel of Matthew 4, 2 presents us with another example of Jesus' human side. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterwards he was famished, indicating that he was susceptible to physical hunger like any human. But his divine nature manifested when resisted the temptations during the same period, showcasing divine power and supremacy over evil. The ultimate proof of his dual nature is seen in the death that Jesus experienced on the cross, 
as captured in the book of Luke 23 46, a truly human end, but his divinity was undeniable when he rose from the dead, an event recorded by all four Gospels, an act only God could perform. This extraordinary harmony of human and divine attributes, illustrated by these biblical examples, is what distinguishes Jesus. Delving into the importance of resurrection in the Christian faith, it serves to counter the argument that Jesus cannot be divine since he experienced death. Adherents of Christianity firmly believe that Jesus, following his crucifixion and burial, conquered death by resurrecting on the third day. This monumental occurrence, celebrated annually as Easter, is seen as a grand triumph over mortality and sin. Christians view this as a compelling endorsement of Jesus' divinity and immortality, fortifying their belief. The resurrection of Jesus encapsulates the promise of hope and redemption, and hence it occupies a pivotal position in Christian faith. By defeating death itself, Jesus' resurrection reinforces the belief in his divinity, further strengthening the trust and faith of Christians worldwide. Let's take a moment to unpack the fascinating concept of divine eternity. Unlike earthly existence, which is bound by the linear constraints of time, divine eternity operates on an entirely different level. This unique paradigm isn't limited by time or space. It symbolizes an unending, continuous existence that transcends our comprehension of the temporal world. It's like an infinite circle, without without a visible beginning or end, existing concurrently everywhere and nowhere. Now how does this fascinating concept of divine eternity relate to Jesus' existence? To understand this, we need to revisit the essence of Jesus as not just an earthly figure, but as a divine entity. Although Jesus' earthly life had a clear starting point, his birth, his divine persona, as the person of the Trinity, isn't restricted by these earthly parameters. His existence operates beyond the realms of time and space, which is a testament to his divine eternity. Jesus' existence is eternal, having existed before time itself and continuing to exist indefinitely. It's as if his existence extends beyond the canvas of time, leaving a mark that surpasses temporal limitations. This is perhaps one of the most profound aspects of Christian theology, that the earthly Jesus and the eternal Christ are one and the same. This idea is deeply rooted in the teachings of the Bible, as evidenced by John chapter 8 verse 58. Here Jesus declares, Before Abraham was born, I am. This bold statement signifies that Jesus, in his divine form, was present even before the birth of Abraham, thereby emphasizing his eternal existence. So, in essence, Jesus' divine existence, as per the concept of divine eternity, transcends the boundaries of time and space, making him eternal. To wrap up, the unique Christian view of Jesus Christ as both divine and human is deeply rooted in the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, Christ's dual aspect, the affirmation of his resurrection, and the difference between mortal existence and divine eternity. These ideas might seem intricate, intricate, and mysterious, but they are at the core of the Christian belief system. We urge you to delve deeper into these truths and engage in stimulating discussions. Remember, every step brings us closer, closer to comprehending the enigmatic nature of Jesus Christ. We inspire you to keep investigating these concepts, asking questions, and challenging your thoughts. Please feel free to like, share to the Closer to God channel for more enlightening content. Embark on this journey towards God with and blessings. Stay enlightened as you delve deeper into your faith. As we approach the conclusion, let's sink deeper into some riveting realities connected to our subject for today. The term Trinity, although not expressly cited in the Bible, is a theological concept often employed by Christians to explain the threefold nature of God. The genesis of this Holy Trinity concept can be traced back to the early centuries of the Christian Church. It was during this era that the ties between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were better understood, a time of great theological investigation and discussion, which shaped Christianity as we know it today. Probing further into the text, a notable trivia is that is that the phrase Jesus wept is notably the briefest verse in the Bible. This pithy verse found in the Gospel of John paints a picture of Jesus' human aspect, reflecting his capacity for grief and empathy. Besides these, there are myriad other intriguing aspects of Jesus' life and the Christian faith. For instance, Jesus was born under the reign of Augustus Caesar when the Roman Empire was at its zenith. His teachings not only kindled a religious movement, but also stirred considerable political unrest. The implications of his crucifixion were deeply political, serving as a tool of Roman rule to uphold law and order. One more captivating element is the evolution of the cross as a symbol. 
Today, it is globally acknowledged as the emblem of Christianity. Historically, however, it was a form of capital punishment punishment employed by the Romans. The transformation of this symbol from a mark of death and disgrace to one of hope and salvation epitomizes the profound influence of Jesus' teachings. There is also the fascinating fact that Christianity wasn't initially recognized as a separate religion, but was sect of Judaism. It was only after Jesus' disciples began spreading his teachings that Christianity began to emerge as a distinct entity. Another intriguing aspect is the role of women in the early Christian community. Contrary to the societal norms of the time, women women played significant roles in the development and spread of Christianity, with several women, like Mary Magdalene, being close associates of Jesus. These facts add more hues to the multifaceted persona of Jesus as both they serve as a testament to the unique historical and cultural context within which Christianity was born and evolved. These fascinating elements make the journey of exploring faith even more mesmerizing. Remember, the quest for understanding is a journey, not a destination. Stay blessed, stay curious, and continue your journey closer to God.